Hello, how you doing? Welcome to the Kenyan Stories by Dan Do a Show, a platform where we dive into the lives of remarkable individuals shaping the landscape of business, industry, and life in general. Today, we are honored to be sitting down with Mohamed Heshi, a true icon in the tourism and hospitality industry. This is an interview you don't want to miss. My name is Mohamed Hersi, Group Director of Operations at uh, Pullman Stewards and Safaris, one of the leading uh, inbound operators in Kenya and East Africa in general. When we look at uh, post-COVID, because we had a very tough two years, we are very optimistic that uh, we are turning the corner. Why am I saying we are optimistic? Number one, we've had smooth elections. Always is a big question mark whether Kenya will have a smooth elections. 2013 was smooth, 2017 was equally smooth, so 2022 also went very well. The focus is also looking very good. You'll realize that uh, in the past we used to get a lot of uh, group troubles, but this time around we're getting a lot of FITs. Uh, you see a couple or a family of four are choosing to travel on their own without that group you know, of travel, which means that they're ready to pay a slightly higher rate. They are willing to stay in more upmarket places, and that to us is a very positive. And the fact that uh, the next election is going to be in 2027, so we have solid four years that we can do, you know, decent business. When you look around Nairobi today, the amount of investment in the hotel industry has been phenomenal. The hotel, uh, the hotels that have invested during the COVID times to review their hotels, today are well positioned to recoup their, you know, their investment. And for us, that gives us a lot of optimism that uh, things are looking up. The only only thing we need to do is also to encourage more airlines uh, to come into Kenya, but equally support our national carrier uh, to do well because they've got their own share of problems. But if they can be supported so that uh, they can uh, do good business and uh, continue to support Kenya, and also these other airlines should be able to connect us to more other cities around the world. Because keep in mind, uh, Kenya is considered a long haul destination from their traditional source markets of Europe, uh, North America is even worse, or Australia. Even or even Asia, so we need to make sure that we have enough airlines coming here, uh, entice them, uh, make it uh, affordable for them to come here, so that the more seats that fly into Nairobi, it means more business uh, for our people. And the easiest way to get our young men and women out of employment is through tourism, because tourism is really automated when it comes to the service provision. You cannot automate waiter service, you cannot automate uh, cook making your breakfast, you can't automate making a room, so it's all labor intensive which means more young men and women will be employed countries like Cambodia Laos Vietnam that were war torn some 30 years ago are uh, doing it and they're actually benefiting from tourism so the big question is why is Kenya and Africa not doing it we believe we have warm people we have nature we have everything our infrastructure has really developed over the last 15 20 years so we are ready to receive the world now, Kenya has a very clear strategy uh, Kenya tourism board which manages magic of Kenya uh, the the strategy is very simple, to try and get as many numbers as possible to come to Kenya, mm -hmm. but equally balance the quality. You just don't want mass tourism for the sake of it. Uh, as much as we are saying we want quality, we equally want also the future tourists to come to Kenya. All these young guys, you know, university who are, who, you know, Gapia, who are supposed to go out and, you know, go back to the... This is the picture. Uh, you know, a lot of them are backpackers, and backpackers are not necessarily cheap. Some of them actually are well to do and they just want that adventure. So it's important we tackle all that. When it comes to sustainability, it's about conservation. Uh, Kenya will always remain predominantly a safari destination and a beach destination. This is God given. Let no one lie to us that we should drop beach and safari. Why should we do that? The rest of the world is trying to adopt to that. Dubai is trying to create a safari. India is trying to create a safari. God has given us safari. But when you look at our safari quality, we can say we are the big five in Africa. You know, South Africa, Botswana, uh, Zimbabwe, you know, Tanzania and Kenya, we are among the top five. So which means that uh, very few countries actually can offer the safari experience that these five countries can offer, and Kenya is one of them. So, but we need to conserve, uh, take care of our water towers, uh, deal with the deforestation. Uh, when we get our young people out of unemployment, it means there'll be less bushmeat trade, there'll be less poaching, and uh, also support Kenya Wildlife Service, who look after this uh, wildlife 
time. Yeah. Conservation is not cheap. It's a very expensive affair. And uh, KW, KWS cannot just depend on government support. They need to be supported in such a way that they also reach out to philanthropists who are willing to support conservation efforts. And let me tell you, as long as trust levels are built, a lot of these philanthropists are willing you know, to support such ventures. You ask me about uh, my youth, my young days, what did I want to be? Uh, initially, I wanted to be a pilot, then changed to banking, and actually joined banking. Uh, my background, I was in banking, but I didn't like it. I found it too laborious, then moved to hotel industry. And I've no regrets. Uh, I meet so many people. I am an outgoing person. I'm not an introvert. I'm an extrovert. Uh, so this kind of environment makes me very happy. And uh, you can also change a lot of lives because tourism, well run, can really impact on communities. And it's about time that uh, we do not leave tourism just in the boardrooms and uh, where you do business. We need to reach out to community. Community must benefit from tourism. And one of the ways is, of course, direct employment. The next one is also to give them capacity building so that they are able uh, to supply your hotels, to supply your tour companies, ETC, go for tours to this one. People want experiential. They just don't want to come and stay in a hotel. They want to know how people live in the countryside. That is the future of tourism. People want to feel the soul. They want to feel the warmth of the people. So when you just take them on a one or two hours tour, it's not good enough. Let them actually even go and have a stay in some of these homestays. As long as safety and security is addressed, then they should be able to benefit. Today, one of the leading uh, tours in Nairobi, number one tour, is by former street children. Nainami. Uh, these are by former street children who take you around where they used to survive and today they are adults, they are married with their own families. And for me, that is an emotional tour. And let me tell you, it is scoring five out of five as experience. Today, an ordinary Kenyan, you tell them, a former street student will take you around, you wonder, security. But let me tell you, when you go through their TripAdvisor page, it's nothing but accolades. Even five-star hotels don't go the scores that are put in by these young men and women conducting Nairobi. So for me, that gives me a lot of optimism and a lot of, you know, hope that uh, we are doing some of these things right. Thank you so much. And that concludes our captivating interview with the exceptional Mohamed Heshi, a true luminary in the Kenyan tourism industry and African tourism and hospitality. Through his remarkable journey, we have witnessed the resilient passion and a waving optimism that has propelled him to great heights. Eshi's commitment to growth and development of the sector is nothing short of inspiration. From his instrumental roles in various industry organizations, his transforming leadership in challenging times, he has left an indelible mark on the landscape of Kenya and African tourism. His ability to navigate through the adversity and turn it into opportunity for progress is a testament to his remarkable character. We extend our heartful gratitude to Mohamed Eshi for sharing his valuable insight, experience and aspiration with us today. His dedication to the industry is deep-rooted love for his work and his belief in the power of positive change serves as inspiration to all of us. As we wrap up this episode of Kenyan Stories by Daniel Dua Show, we encourage you to carry forward lessons learned from Mohamed Eshi's journey. Let us embrace optimism, resilience and passion for excellence in our endeavors, knowing that we too can make a significant impact in our community and industry. Thank you for joining us and looking forward to bringing you more inspirational stories from extraordinary individuals shaping the diverse tapestry of Kenya. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will continue celebrating the remarkable stories that make our nation exceptional. Remember, these are the stories of our time. My name is Daniel Dua. Until the next one. Bye-bye.